Last time we derived the derivative formulas for the sine and the cosine function. Now today we'd like to practice using them in some derivative exercises. So in each case we want to find dy dx. We're given in the first instance y is the quotient of sine of x to x. And so to differentiate y we apply the quotient rule. So our dy dx, or if we want to write y prime in place, we could do so and say y prime is therefore going to be the product of the, uh, the denominator x times the derivative of the numerator, derivative of sine, minus the numerator, sine of x, times the derivative of the denominator, derivative of x, Right, and we'll have to divide the difference by the denominator squared, right, x squared. So that's simply an application of the quotient rule, where we take the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. We, we proved that the derivative of the sine of x would be the cosine of x, and of course, the derivative of x to the first by the power rule is 1. And so we get the formula for the derivative of y to be x times the cosine of x minus the sine of x, all divided by x squared. Okay, so that would simply be the formula for dy dx or y prime using the quotient rule. Um, and, and our second problem uh, involves a sum of the cosine squared of x with 2x. So, so to differentiate the sum, we would take the sum of the derivatives. So the derivative of y, y prime, would be the derivative of the first function. And remember, the notation cosine to the second of x means the cosine of x times the cosine of x, or in other words, we could write the cosine of x squared, right? So we have to differentiate the cosine of x squared, and then add to that the derivative of 2x. Okay, so you see our first derivative is the derivative of a function of x raised to a power. So that's our, our generalized power rule, which is a consequence of the chain rule. Right, where we'll take the power, we multiply it by the base function to the original power minus 1. So 2 minus 1 is just 1. But then we have to follow up by multiplying by the derivative of the base function. Okay, so the derivative of cosine squared of x would be 2 cosine of x times the derivative of the cosine of x. Okay, which, by the way, of course, we know the derivative of the cosine of x, we had proved to be negative the sine of x. Okay, and to this, we add the derivative of 2x, which would be 2 times the derivative of x, or just 2 times 1, or 2. And so, therefore, we conclude that the derivative of y is going to be minus 2 sine of x times the cosine of x, plus 2. Okay, so that's the derivative of this uh, sum function. Okay, our third derivative problem involves a product differentiating x times the cosine of x. So for this, we apply the product rule. So our y prime will be the first function x multiplied by the derivative of the second function plus the second function cos x multiplied by the derivative of the first. Again, we showed the derivative of the cosine of x must be negative the sine of x. Okay, and we know the derivative of x to the first is 1. So the formula for the derivative of y in this case will be minus x sine of x plus the cosine of x.
Okay, so that problem we solved using the product rule. Okay, so let, let's take a look at our next problem, which is to differentiate the sine of x squared plus 2. Okay, so notice that this function y is a composition of two functions, right? First, our x gets mapped by the quadratic function into x squared plus 2, and then we take the sine of that, of that value, okay? So it's a two-step operation, right? First, we have to map by the, the quadratic function, and then we have to apply uh, the sine function. So to solve a derivative problem involving compositions, we use the chain rule. <clears throat> we, we typically would set the inner function in the composition, call that function u. So in this case, our inner function in the composition is the quadratic x squared plus 2. So therefore, we could say y is the sine of u, where u is x squared plus 2. Okay, and so we know that <coughs> dy dx, okay, the rate of change of y with respect to x, could be, be represented as the product of the rate of change of y with respect to u multiplied by the rate of change of u with respect to x dy dx is dy du times du dx. So specifically because y is the sine of u, so dy du is the u derivative of the sine of u, and because u is x squared plus 2, du dx is the x derivative of x squared plus 2. Okay, so again, this notation d du means take the u derivative of what follows. Find the u derivative of the sine of u. Again, d dx, right, is the derivative operator with respect to x. So this is saying take the x derivative of the function x squared plus 2. And so, so again, well, we prove derivative of sine of u with respect to u to be the cosine of u. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 2 is 0. Therefore, the derivative of x squared plus 2 is simply 2x. And so now we should finish the problem by expressing our formula for the derivative only in terms of the variable x, okay? So the derivative of y is going to be 2x times the cosine of u, but u is x squared plus 2. So our formula becomes dy dx is 2x times the cosine of x squared plus 2. Okay. So we have one, one final uh, problem to solve, and that is to find the derivative of the cosine of the square root of x. So again, as in the previous problem, y is a composition of two functions, right? The inner function is the, the square root function, and the outer function, of course, is the cosine function. So again, we're going to apply the chain rule to solve the derivative problem. So we're going to set u again to be the inner function, namely the square root of x. So we'll write y is the cosine of u, where u is radical x. Okay, and so by the chain rule, dy dx is the product dy du times du dx, right? So we need to take the derivative with respect to u of y, y is the cosine of u, times the x derivative of u. So u is the square root of x, or equivalently, x to the power of 1 half. Now, the derivative of the cosine of u, we know to be negative the sine of u. And by the power rule, derivative of x to the one-half is one-half x to the power negative one-half. Okay, so again, to finish our problem, 
we would like to express our formula only in terms of the variable x, okay? So we would have, okay, minus the sine of u, but again, u is root x, and then we have divided by, right, this, this factor 2 in the denominator, and the x to the minus 1 half, uh, we could write uh, in the denominator as x to the positive 1 half, or in other words, the square root of x. Thus, uh, dy dx is going to be minus the sine of radical x divided by 2 radical x. So I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.